All right. Hello, JCal friends and family. We are back with another session of our pop up art class. I hope you all are doing well, staying safe, uh, and being healthy. Uh, today, we are going to do talk about scale. We're going to talk about angle, which also has to do with perspective in our drawing. And what I mean by that is, if you remember from a few weeks ago, where we drew our three-dimensional boxes, well, we drew three-dimensional boxes to understand perspective and how things look uh, at different angles. Uh, and, and that's what we want to do today. We want to talk about the angle of the face. So if you think about the 3D box as the head, then we can use that to visualize our face in any angle. So this is looking up and out, right? If I were to add the, the guidelines for the eyes, the nose and the mouth, you can kind of see almost a SpongeBob SquarePants type figure uh, forming here. So this would be, if we carved this out, right? If we revealed the, the face inside of here, we can carve out that head and we can see the angle at which this head exists. Now here's the nose. This is the mouth here. And I'm just carving this out. And you can imagine here's the chin and the neck is going to come out from here. So just imagine carving away these shapes and you can see, we can understand that there's four sides. There's the, the, the face, the, si the side of the head and um, and that's how we figure it out. So if you can think about it like that, you can understand how to shade. We know that there's going to be more shadow on the underside because the, the lights come from here. But we can see that the angle, if we understand the angle, then we can draw the face at any angle, but we also have to understand foreshortening. Now foreshortening is when you turn your head to the side and then you only see, you see more of the right side than you do of the left side. Um, so you have to kind of keep in mind how things move and change as they turn. And if you visualize that 3D box, then you can always pull out a face even from your imagination. And now even if I understand the perspective here, what's going on with the perspective, then I can just follow these lines in order to draw the rest of the body. And now everything is gonna have the same angle and the same slope. So here's his chest area and I'm going to make that a little bit wider for his shoulders so you can see this is his chest and I'm still using 3D boxes to kind of understand how to put together this figure so everything is going to be the same you got to understand how these lines are all going at the same angle and the same slope so if we can just see that, then I can understand how that nose is gonna look, looking at it from underside too. There's gonna be more shadow here because of the, the eyes cave into the head just a little bit. And if we wanna give him just a little bit more of a chin. Here's the neck. You can see, I can build a human, I can build a figure and if I wanna raise that arm up like this, let's say here's his fist. Even the fist is a, and the arms are all 
squares, we can think about them. In order to understand how to shade and how to make your figures have dimension, right? So now I can just say, I, I don't wanna put the arm down at the side. I wanna move it up and get and make it have an interesting perspective. So you have to understand a lot of things here, but mainly we need to understand perspective. So if we un think about it like a Lego figure almost, um, I'm gonna draw this arm, here's the shoulder and then the bicep right here. And then I know that from proportion, I know that the shoulder plus the bicep is going to equal the forearm. So I'm going to draw that side of the forearm and here's the elbow. Now here's the underside. And if I shade this in, remember everything's the same slope, same angle, shade that in. Now I can take my hand and just kind of wipe that away. Or if you have a blending stump, that works too. And you can see, here's my interesting perspective for uh, a figure. And then after you have those shapes figured out, then you can just kind of erase them away. And now we can use this to draw a hand. Let's see, the hand would fit. Here's the, this hand is basically a, a flat square a flat cube. And then if he's going like this, then his thumb is going to be here. And then his hands will come up like that. And you can think about it as one, two, three. All right. So hands are hard. You have to just kind of figure them out piece by piece. But you can see there's the, the palm of the hand here and then there's this section for the fingers. And we're running out of space there, but you can see we can draw from any perspective. Now let's try a, a new one. Let's try a different perspective. So we can draw looking down. If you think about the angle, of that head, you can see it's looking down, but it's at an angle. So now we can think about this and find the oval inside of it. That chin is going to be here. And we'll just carve that head out. We know the ear is going to be here. The ear, oops, the ear is on the same point, uh, level as the eyes. And now it goes down to the nose. So you can just follow that here. So there's the ear. And now we have the mouth just below that. So then there's the chin. So now we have our guidelines. Now we see how this is curving. We're, we're kind of sculpting this face out of the, the cube, but we're just using the cube to understand the different sides, right? So now that we have the sides figured out, we need to remember our proportion and anatomy and know that the, the chin goes from the ear down and it curves, uh, the jaw goes down all the way to the chin. That chin is going to be at the same angle, same slope. See these lines we just used to help us find that angle, find the slope. All right, so now, we're going to draw the eyes. And the nose is helpful because we know that if the nose is coming to here, remember the nose is kind of in the middle of the face. So if we understand where that line, how it comes out, see the nose is like a triangle and it comes out. So then we need to indicate that by drawing this line here and this line here to show how it's three dimensional. Now we have the brow that comes out like this in the cheek comes out 
and then that jaw comes in all the way to the chin. And it's like that for both sides. So now we can see where the eyes are here. It's a little big. And here. You see our face in each of the Just so if you like. So now that we understand the angle, we can draw the head from any perspective, any angle. All right, let's go a little bit bigger. I want to talk a little bit about scale too. So scale is making things look big or small depending on their perspective. So if we have a horizon line here, like this, say that's a horizon line. Now, say we wanted to draw something that looked really big compared to something that looked really small. So we could draw a figure and let's say we want to look up at this figure. It's a giant. So if we're looking up, it's just like we're looking at a building. Notice how this building is like one point perspective, how these lines converge to our vanishing point. Now, if we're looking up, your, your vanishing point uh, is going to be up in the sky. So we can start with the head. And I instinctively drew a oval, but really what we want to draw is this 3D box again. See this 3D box is gonna help us understand how this figure is gonna slope. So let's imagine here's the head and all these lines are kind of converging back, 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 back but they're going up as well. So it's almost two point perspective. We could say that this is our vanishing point here and here. So we're looking up and these lines are going back to here. And then here's the neck. Foreshortening causes us to see more of the chest. And then here would be the rib cage and the uh, torso. And now imagine this is a box, I'm, I'm looking through it, but it comes at us, but it also comes in because your rib cage goes in. So now we have the waist, the legs, and the knees, and then the feet. are going to plant on the ground like so. All right, so you can see the general um, outline of our giant here. Let's say his arms are coming back. Here's his arm coming down. Maybe he's holding a, a giant sword or staff. So I'm going to have the staff It's going back like that. All right, and here's the sides. Remember, three-dimensional. Think in terms of three-dimensional shapes. And here's the eyes, the nose, the mouth. And we're seeing the underside of the nose, so there's going to be a shadow here. We can carve out the shape of the head. And the hand, I drew this uh, a little bit long because this hand is the arm. If you put your hand down to your side, it only goes to about halfway past your waist or about a little bit down your thigh. So I had to shorten that just a little bit. 
Okay, so here's our giant. I'm gonna have his arm uh, coming out and up like this now. So it's gonna, there's gonna be some foreshortening and some perspective involved. And here's the shoulder bicep, three dimensional shape. And this arm is coming up. Remember this will be the same size as the shoulder and bicep. And here's his balled up fist, like he's shaking his fist, ah. All right. So now this will help us if we wanna do shading. So we can shave, shade the underside of the chin. Anything on the bottom is gonna get shaded or on the side, because I'm imagining the light's coming from here. So it's coming down. This will be shaded. This will be shaded. We can kind of see his, here's a belly button. And we can give him clothing now if we want. Here's his shoulder here. And we'll give him, uh, you know, pants or something that, like that later. But really, I just kind of want you to see the shapes that we're using, you know, and the dimensionality of it. All right, so we're shading in. Shade, shade, shade. We love to shade. That's from a old drawing series. I used to watch that song. All right. Now we have the big giant. Now we're gonna draw our little human. So here's the silhouette of our human here. I'm just using basic shapes. Here's the head, the neck, the shoulders, the torso, the waist, the, the thigh, the lower leg, thigh, lower leg, feet, and now you can see our little guy here standing up to this big giant. Maybe he has a, a sword in his hand. Ah, he's gonna, he's not, he's not backing down to this challenge that's before him. So now you can see this is an example of scale. So this giant is facing this maybe normal size human. Maybe we could show that he's even bigger by adding like buildings in the background. Maybe these are different skyscrapers in the background. And look at, I'm still using my 3D boxes right here for the guy. I didn't really have to because it's in silhouette. I just kind of wanted the outline of my figure to make it stand in contrast with my giant that lies before me. So here's some more buildings going off into the distance. Remember things that are further away get smaller. So I can use these same guidelines here to make my buildings. And notice how they get bigger as they get closer. All right, so this is kind of cool. Um, I could actually take this and make a little painting with it. What do you think? Um, so I'm going to start with maybe a slightly, oh, I always like to, to start with yellow. I'm going to use spray paint today, you guys. Um, spray paint is instant color in a can and um it's cool because you can start off really um broad and general and then work your way to uh the finer details and that's what we always want to focus on is starting broad and general and then working our way to the the dirty details all right, so save those details for last. Um, so I'm gonna come in here with a slightly darker yellow. You wanna do this in a well-ventilated area. You wanna wear gloves. Um, I got the fan going on in the background. I got my mask, two of them. And I have my 
my air flowing through here. So we're gonna do, um, we're gonna try doing a portrait with spray paint too. And you guys might notice this little thing here. Well, this is a handy dandy uh, piece of plastic. If you don't have one, you can use cardboard or you can use paper, just fold a piece of paper and then you can use it uh, to get angles, cool angles with the spray paint. So I'll show you what I mean. Say I don't wanna, I don't wanna paint on this part of the leg, but I wanna paint in the background here. So I can use my piece of paper and just kind of use it to, as a straight edge. And then you can just spray like that and shade. And now with paper, it, it, it's not as durable as the plastic, um, but it will still do the job. It helps if you have maybe multiple pieces of paper. All right, so I'm gonna continue with the shading a little bit, just continuing to pick out those angles. And you can see the closer you get, kind of the finer the line, the more you pull back with the spray paint, the more fuzzy it's going to be. Um, I'm just giving it little taps of color. Um, I'm gonna get in here around the head a little bit. If you go over and um, see, this is what the paper, it starts to crinkle after a little bit, which is why I like to use the plastic. It's a little more flexible, a little more malleable. You can see I just shaded that curve in the head pretty nicely. Just curving it around this way. Now you guys might have seen similar uh, techniques like this, you know, on the streets of New York uh, with the spray paint artists on the street. Sometimes they do similar things to this. Um, but this is a little bit different. Um, I'm thinking about this as, uh, you know, just, this is just a, a technique, right? We want to experiment and try new techniques. Um, the more techniques you can experiment and try with, uh, try out, um, the more likely you are to, you know, invent something uh, very unique. All right, so this is kind of cool. I'm gonna switch colors now. I'm gonna go to, uh, I'm gonna add a little bit of blue. Or how about a little orange? I, I'm kind of in these uh, fire colors right now with everything that's going on. You know, it's uh, it's kind of uh, my, my color palette at the moment. Um, let's see if we can use this correctly. My caps are clogging a little bit. Sometimes you just have to kind of shake it. If you make a mistake, it's okay. You can just kind of wipe it away. Um, I'm gonna go back in here and just kind of tone it. Oh, we're almost out of orange there. So if you run out of one color, you just gotta use another. Um, so I'm going to use this red. All right, now that I've got my spray paint on there, I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of white. Oh, that was kind of cool. All right, so now I'm gonna come in here with, uh, with a little brush and start to pick out some details. So I do have some paint over here. 
Um, this is kind of a transparent uh, ink. I'm just kind of using my drawing from earlier as a guide. You want to take your time uh, and just take your time to figure out the perspective. And I went kind of fast just because I want to sh show you guys everything today. I want to get to multiple things today. I want to try an, a, a portrait, uh, doing a nice spray paint portrait. Um, you can see the details are starting to show themselves, to reveal themselves. Here I go adding the shoulder. My hand is sticking to the paper, so I'm going to use this as a little mat. All right, so here would be the collarbone. Um, I'm not thinking about the hair just yet or any of these facial features. Um, I want to pick, just kind of pick out the form of the figure. So here would be the belly button and then about the middle of the waist is here. This giant appears to be shirtless at the moment, but we can fix that with a few strokes of the brush. Now he's, we can give him like a, some armor. Maybe he's wearing some armor. There's a little abs in there. Just use your imagination. And the more free and loose you are, um, the better. You know, sometimes when you think too much, sometimes when you overthink things, uh, it tends to look stale, the art. Um, you know, if you spend too much time on something, it can, uh, there's such a thing as too much control. There's such a thing as too much control. And uh, art is more fun sometimes when you let go and you allow the, the work to sh reveal itself to you and to kind of show you the direction you know, you, you yourself are just channeling uh, the creativity. It, the creativity already exists within you. All you have to do is just channel it by allowing it to flow through you like electricity, right? You, electricity, uh, it has, it's wild and it's free unless you channel it through a wire to a direct image or to a direct object. And just like creativity is just like electricity, you have, it's best when you just let it flow, but also when you control it just a little bit. So, um, someone once said that uh, art is uh, the ability to form order out of chaos. And when you have, when you start with the chaos, it allows you to discover an order instead of force an order, if that makes any sense. If you can just allow yourself to lose control a little bit uh, in the beginning and then work your way towards more control 
more order. Um, then I like this little highlight on his head there. I'm gonna kind of leave that. And I'm just gonna shade the back here a little more. This guy's got a little more armor here. Maybe he's got a shadow. I'm gonna draw the shadow here just to give it a little more drama. Remember the shadow's gonna come this way, so it's gonna get bigger as it comes at us. So you gotta think about those things too. Shadows are a lot of fun to do. Maybe this guy has a giant shadow that he's casting too. So I'm gonna indicate that here. And now shadows, they're always darker the closer they are to the figure. So it's going to be darker here. And then it's going to fade as it comes closer. I need a slightly bigger brush for this part. Ooh, that was a lot, but that looks good. All right, now I'm going to shade the sides of these buildings. Oh, and I can, I like this dry brush effect that we're using with this uh, one inch brush here. I'm just using it to blend some of these shadow areas here. It creates these kind of motion lines that are nice. All right, I'm gonna shade a little bit more here on the street. And on these buildings. And so I'm being loose and, th and that's my favorite kind of kind of art. My favorite kind of art is where the artist shows me where he uh, loses control and also where he or she uh, has control. I like to see the juxtaposition of the loose and the tight. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm using this to kind of highlight the back area. You can see it tones it, makes it look more atmospheric, like it's further away. And now when I do that, I can come back in here and highlight some areas with the shadow. This is what's fun about spray paint, um, using spray paint, because it's so easy to tone the canvas and to create cool uh, effects. Um, and now, I, I want to try to stay away from using lines specifically, and I want to think more about shadow and tonality. So in the beginning, it's nice to use lines, but then as you go on, it's nice to think about the tonality, the, sh the shading, the, the, the contrast between light and dark. Right, so I, I think I need to get my, my shadows back in here real quick and then I can add some highlights and this thing's gonna really start to take off. I don't wanna forget about my shadow under the chin, under the lip here, under the eyes, here's the nose, the neck. Yeah, so this is kind of cool. We're just going back and forth Here's the belt, shoulder. I might come back into these shoulders with some highlights. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap this one up pretty quick. I kind of like where it's at. Sometimes it's nice just to do little quick sketches and ideas and you can use those for paintings. You know, these could be quick little sketch ideas for future projects. Maybe it's, you know, these are, these can turn into just 
pure works of art by themselves. It all depends on your mind frame and your intentions. If you set your mind to creating a work of art, then that's what you'll do. If you are interested in learning, just solely studying other artists, that's super valuable too. Sometimes when you study a photo or a reference, it'll help you to understand. And drawing objects in perspective and figuring out uh, proportion, figuring out foreshortening, figuring out anatomy. These are all areas that you should be studying uh, if you really want to improve your art. So drawing the anatomy uh, and perspective, I think is really the most important. Um, learning the different muscle groups and how they fit together is important. Um, you want to be able, maybe we should give this guy some like wild hair. Maybe, yeah, here, we'll, we'll give it like a He-Man type of look. Just didn't look good bald. This is, this is like a wild He-Man giant figure. Um, all right. So now we have this little guy down here saying, oh my gosh, how will I ever defeat this giant? But if there's a will, there's a way. And this, this is kind of a, an, a nice analogy for facing insurmountable problems. And now painting, uh, we can use a giant and a little person here as like kind of a symbol for, for a struggle, for overcoming issues and problems, right? Art is all about expression. Maybe this giant is a, uh, a problem. Here, I wanna give him some eyebrows. He's gonna look a little bit more mean now. Maybe this, this giant is, is representative of a, a problem or an issue that you're going, dealing with or going through. And this is you, you know, ready to battle and ready to take on this, this, this thing that's troubling you. You know, so if there's anything that's going on in your life, well, you can express that in your art, right? And sometimes when we just kind of let go, let ourselves loose, then it allows us to channel those feelings, those thoughts, those emotions into um, beautiful works of art that will help you to understand and cope and deal with everything that you're going through. So use art as a tool for healing and as a tool for expression and as a tool for teaching other people, right? We can show people the world that we want to see or the issues that we deal with in order to help people understand. And that's what art is all about. It's showing people other ways of thinking, new perspectives, right? So that's why it's important we keep our mind open. So this is kind of a cool little piece. We're gonna move on to a portrait. Um, and I'm going to get a little bit bigger for this portrait. I'm going to go a little bit bigger. I'm going to get out the canvas. So let me just move these things aside. Again. All right. Here comes the canvas. All right, so we're gonna start with the spray paint. And uh, 
I think we're going to do maybe uh, two heads at an angle. Um, let's just see what happens. Uh, I'm going to start with my yellow for the background. Let me put on my mask. All right. So I'm toning the canvas. I'm I'm I don't I don't want just a white canvas. I want to get color on there as quickly as I can, just so that I can start to so I, I don't have to worry about you know what to that I'm gonna ruin this perfect white canvas. I'm just gonna kind of jump in there, start covering things with color. Um let's get funky with this background. And um, maybe the, uh, the, the piece, we're just going to try to let the piece reveal itself to us. All right. So I'm seeing two figures here. And I'm, I'm imagining the heads are right here. So I'm, I'm thinking of kind of the, the profile and the outline <laughs> of the head. Um, I'm thinking about composition. I'm thinking about um, spacing. Uh, I, I wanna kind of have a certain type of movement to the piece. Okay, so that's kind of nice for my setup. Um, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna start with uh, with a nice little shadow here. I'm gonna start with my shadow color. I'm gonna stand up for this. All right. So let's see here. So I'm thinking about the angles, right? I'm thinking about where the light. I like having the light come from this way and maybe the shadows will be on this side. So let's try to, um, I'm gonna use my uh, little plastic sheet to help me just kind of pick out the form. All right, so let's see here. I'm gonna start with this. Neck a little bit. This is gonna be the neck. Um, now I'm going to come in here and just pick out the, uh, the curve of the skull. So I'll go maybe a little something like this. And this will be the back of the cranium. Okay, now I'm gonna come down here maybe for a little bit of the front of the face. Maybe I'll do the chin. Do the chin here now. So this will be chin. Now the neck. These are my guidelines. I'm starting with the guidelines here. So this is the front of the face. This is the side. This is why I'm wearing gloves. <laughs> um, the chin I want to have come out a little bit more. Um, now I'm going to curve the face. Uh, let me make it a little bit bigger. And I'm going to be filling this in. So I'm just kind of I need to be a little more loose. When, when I start thinking too much, 
it means I need to open up and, and, and loosen up. Um, sometimes thinking too much uh, can be a problem. So I just want to just want to go a little bit quicker. So I'm going to fill this in. This will help me find my form a little bit better, I think. I really like these, uh, this purple, the yellow, and the orange together. I like the fuzziness of it. I think that's really beautiful. That's an, another thing that I love about spray paint. So we have the shoulders here. All right, uh, I'm gonna do my other figure. They're gonna be standing together because that's what we need to do as a nation and as a people, uh, as humans, we got to stand together. Uh, and work towards equality and unity and peace. Uh, so that's those are the types of things that have been on my mind. And that's, that's what art is all about. It's uh, discovering your thoughts and your feelings and your emotions and and uh, and just trying to get to know yourself and understand the types of things that that you uh, are into and that you feel. You know, what gets you going? What moves you? That's what art's all about. Finding the, the fascinating and beautiful things in this world. There's so much out there. So much beauty. We have to go find it. Okay, so you can see the two heads here. There's kind of the ear, I guess. Yeah, that'll be the ear. All right. That's kind of cool. Um, now that I have my profile, you can see it's kind of at an angle. I don't know if you can see the face already. I can kind of see the face in there. Um, maybe now I will use a little bit of, um, I'm going to kind of let this dry just a little bit. Maybe I can add just a touch of white here and there. Um, it's a little tacky right now. This might be an interesting time for glue. I wonder if we could do a little glue, a little glue action, um, just to kind of help us figure out where those highlights are gonna be. And then when they dry, when the glue dries, um, or even while it's still wet, we can kind of spray it or just use it to kind of figure out where things are gonna be. So I'm gonna start with um, kind of figuring out, I think if I start with the nose, that helps me figure out where the middle of the face is gonna be. Let me sit down here. All right, I'm gonna kind of pick up the, uh, here's gonna be the top of the head here. Now we're drawing with glue here, guys. I need it to come out a little bit faster, so I gotta fix fix the gunk in here. All right. So starting with this kind of hairline, I, I don't always start in the same place or in the same spot. Um, it, it varies depending on the piece and like how I'm feeling. Um, I'm gonna put the little bit of highlight here in the forehead. Um, you can see that the paint is still kind of wet. Uh, if you, this will be the nose. The highlight for the nose. Um, now I'm gonna come here for the cheek, little highlight on the cheek area. Uh, 
and a little shadow for the nose. This so I'm imagining that the light's coming from here. So this should be maybe a little more highlighted here. You can see here's the eye. Um, you know, kind of the eye on the other side. Um, this would be the lips. Um, a little highlight here on the other side of the nose. This is the bottom lip. Um, now I want to do the chin. This is this is we're painting with glue here. Let me fix that chin. And you can kind of spread it out to to um, thin it. Uh, I want to add a little highlight on the cheek. Because remember, if you think about this side here is going to be in shadow, and then this here, anything that's mainly on the left of the face will, will have, um, will catch a highlight. And now the cheekbones, those stick out and the nose here, this is the nose that, that sticks out. Um, there's the shadow always underneath the nose, shadow always on the chin. Um, try to blend in this forehead highlight a little more. Um, spread it around. All right, a little more highlight on the eye. There we go. So it's almost kind of, it's like a stencil almost the way that I'm using the glue. All right, let me do. All right, so there's one person and I'm and I'm trying to draw. I think it's important to draw people that uh, are different than you. You, you. you know, every every time you do a drawing, um it's kind of a self portrait. And so if you're drawing people, especially from your head, uh, it can it can end up looking like you. Uh, I, I know that's true for me. I think it's true of uh, a lot of other people too. So it's important to try to draw people that um, don't look like you. And, you know, of course it's important to draw all kinds of people, but um, you know you want to diversify your your skill set in your portfolio. You know, so you want to you want to be inclusive and you know try something new. That's what it's all about. I hope that your whole life you are open to trying and experimenting and, and doing new things, you know? So this is kind of interesting. And I think I need to, the upper lip. Yeah, here we go. Fix that upper lip. That's much better. See, sometimes all you need to do is just push it around a little bit and uh, see what happens. Whoop. All right. Yeah, this is fun. All right, I'm gonna try doing this one now. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna start with the nose, just like on this one. 
wanna bring that down just a little bit. Um, little nose action here. So let's come down for the cheek wounds. Fill that in. Spread it around. Sometimes the more loose you are, the, the cooler the marks look. Um, if you think a lot, sometimes you lose the freshness. Um, I, I have no idea um, what I'm doing sometimes. <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you guys, uh, but that is what I think makes the art uh, special is that it's kind of all happenstance and you're, we're discovering, um, we're, we're, we're discovering new ways of of uh, creating things. Like how many times have you seen someone paint with blue? Uh, I, I haven't seen anyone else do it. So I think it's kind of unique. And all of that is just experimentation. And things happen naturally, right? And that's what it's all about. We wanna allow things to happen naturally. Um, I'm gonna finish this bottom lip. Now, I wanna try to finish this drawing before the glue dries so that I can spritz it with some color. If you don't like something, just wipe it up. Um, let's see here. All right. So I think we're about ready to spritz it again. Get a little bit more color on there. You know, I once saw a, uh, a work of art that was more like a sign. And on the, the sign, it was written uh, draw or paint what a camera can't, right? So we want, it's nice to be able to draw realistically, but sometimes that's not the most interesting thing. Sometimes it's more interesting to do something uh, representational and, and uh, maybe a little more abstract than realistic. And, and, and by doing that, we discover uh, we discover new things. And again, that's the most important thing, I think. All right, so this is cool. Let's get let's get some some other color on here before it dries completely. Maybe I'm gonna spritz it again with a little yellow. Running low on the paint. But remember, you run out of one color, just use another.
now the the color that I'm spraying over the face should dry. Uh, I like that. I'm adding some highlights. See what time it is here. It's 501. All right, we're going to spend uh, a few more minutes here finishing this guy up just because I really like where this is going. Um, I'm having a lot of fun. I hope you guys are too. I love uh, experimenting and trying new things with you guys. I'm going to use this blue as a kind of uh, middle mid tone. Uh, between the, the purple and and the yellow. Now, I don't want to do too much because I kind of like the simplicity of it. That landed in a nice spot there, actually. That blue, that was kind of cool. And now here's the thing. If you want to start taking some of that away, some of this color away, you can come back in here and add another highlight with the glue. There we go. Sometimes just a, a single mark can make all the difference. I'm gonna cover that a little bit. And these highlights will really kind of make it pop extra. Now it looks like it's shining. So you know when I, you know when I'm not talking that I'm having fun, because <laughs> I'm like getting, I'm really getting into it. And this is why it's great to um, try new things. You, you, if you're not having fun while you're painting, then you're not doing it right. You, you got to have fun while you paint. Um, if it's a battle, you know, and, and I've been there, you know, sometimes a painting will just, you just really have to kind of duke it out with the, with the painting in order to make it, you know, to, in order to get it where you want it. But the more fun it is, the less you have to kind of battle with your, with your art, then the more you're going to enjoy the end result, the more you're going to uh, enjoy the process. Um, there's such a thing as too much, right? You know, so how do you know when to stop? How do you know when a piece is done? Um, well, these are questions that we have to constantly ask, ask ourselves. How do you know when, when a piece is done? Maybe it just feels right. Maybe uh, the more marks you add, the worse it gets, you know? So you're like, all right, I gotta stop before I ruin it. Cause you can overwork a piece too. Uh, something that I have done many, many, many times. Um, all right, so here, here is a picture of, of two, two individuals who are standing together, unified. They're, on, they're, they're a team, they're, 
Maybe they're a couple, maybe they're friends, maybe they're heroes. Who knows? Um, I think we need some hoop earrings. Now this will, will be a, uh, a woman. And this is our, our guy. And it's cool because you can, they kind of just blend together. You, you can't really tell where one starts and the other one ends. Maybe a little, um, a little highlight on the eye. Okay, maybe just a tad more paint and then we can call it. Uh, get up for the spray. Just a little bit more paint. Uh, I need a new cap here. Can't spray with the clog cap. There we go. If I can get any last bit out of here. Yes, I can. There we go. Yeah. Ooh, I like these splatters. Interesting. All right, now I'm going to use this real quick just to get some highlights. And then I think we can call it. Uh, so where do I want these highlights? I want one right here. See how that kind of brings out the neck a little bit. I'm going to do it for the chin. All right, a little bit of shadow. Need to fix this a little bit. This here. There we go. Remember, push and pull, back and forth. That's the name of the game. Fix the chin here. Almost. Now he's got a little chin strap beard. That's cool. I can dig it. Uh, this one, I don't want that though. Oh, yeah. A little bit more shoulder for this guy. Uh huh. A little freehand shading. And let's get him some more hair. It up a little bit more. All right, almost done here, guys. Let's check it out. We got some nice little movement going on here. Just a little more orange. I let these these little shots like that, they're kind of happy accidents. I kind of like them when that stuff like that happens. I want to define this a little bit more. I really like this side here. 
but I want to uh, fix this one a little bit more. Chin. There we go. Let's see. A few more touches here and there. We'll call it. This could be this could be a, a king and a queen. Sort of losing it, I need to get it back a little bit with the highlights. It's interesting to see the development uh, of the of the piece. You know, that's why it's kind of fun if you record yourself so that you can watch it back, play it back, and see 